Hi, my name's Darren Brooks. I'm a caver in the Cape Range region. This cave here is called Wanderer's Delight. It's found in 1987 and uh, it's the longest cave we know of in the Cape Range. It's just a smidgen under seven kilometers of surveyed length. Uh, one of the longest trips in the cave you can do is down to the end of the sea lead which is on the southeast corner of the cave. That takes about four hours to get down to the end of the cave. And that's four hours of steady travelling. If you stop for rest or take photos, it can take a lot longer. So you're looking at, uh, if you stop for a break here and there, you're looking about a nine hour round trip to get to the very end and then back again at the furthest point. On the uh, the, com the composite map of the pages of the cave, it's, it's mapped out in A4 sized pages. So it can be viewed in booklet form. Uh, it's done at a scale of 1 to 500 so that means every centimetre on the page is equivalent to 5 metres on the ground. Okay. An A4 page is uh, 21 centimetres across on its shortest side so it's uh, a little over 100 metres across a page so if you look at the scale on the map each time you go across a page you've travelled 100 metres in the cave that gives you an idea of the scale across this this whole system right. that's so that's about 1500 meters across here well mapping a cave is a slow process it's done using a compass to get your directions we use a device called an inclinometer which gives you the slope angle and we use a tape measure of various types you can use a, a, a fiber tape measure which you wind off a reel. Uh, nowadays we use a, a, a laser distometer which measures the distances for us which makes their life a bit easier for people doing the, the surveying. So you measure from point to point and we call them stations and you'll measure from point A or station A to station B by measuring the distance with the tape and then you'll measure the compass direction and then you will measure the slope angle whether it's up or down because the true distance is found using some simple uh, trig maths to get the real distance because the slope angle measurement is longer than the horizontal distance. But we look at caves on a two-dimensional plane when we survey them. So we're looking from the air looking down on the cave and we see it in its true distances measured, not in the slope angle distances measured. You only see the slope angle distances when you look at a side view of a passage or a, or a chamber in a cave. And because it's such a long complicated cave it's been a very strict surveying process so every sighting is done forwards and then it's done backwards to the station behind so we check up on every uh, bearing that we make so to uh, that's to eliminate errors and to increase the accuracy of the survey it's probably taken uh, several thousand man hours to get the cave to this stage and as I mentioned previously although the first few kilometers were, were surveyed in the first year it's taken up to you know 2016 now from 1988-89 to get it up to seven kilometers when this cave was found the first three or four kilometers were surveyed within a year because there was uh was all the big passages were first explored and surveyed and by an enthusiastic group of young local cavers assisted by a, a very experienced American caver who happened to be working in town at the time. Uh, after that uh, all those young cavers left and the, the survey continued piecemeal right up to the present day so we're still going in there and still surveying little bits of cave which has crept it up to about seven kilometers. The, uh, it has a canal section in the cave, it's one of the most popular touristy trips in there uh, where you can lay in the water and swim through tunnels with decoration hanging down but unfortunately it does take at least an hour to get down there as well so it's a big trip it's not an easy trip to do and it's all crawling unfortunately unlike the name Wanderer's Delight it's not such a delight when you're in the cave it's uh, mostly crawling it's a uh, hot humid slippery muddy dirty and low and uh, typically it's low because most of the cave is formed at the bedding plane between the Tolki limestone and the Mandukau Karanite. Mandukau Karanite being softer than the Tolki limestone, when the water filters down to that level and rushes through the tunnels, it tends to eat the sides of the cave or erode the sides of the cave out faster than it does the floors, which 
which tend to get covered with cobbles and protective layers of silt and stuff. So you end up with lots of low wide passages. You can crawl down and you can lay across them quite easy but well, you know, virtually impossible to stand up unless you're extremely short or you come to a, the occasional uh, higher chamber where you can actually get up on your feet and give your back a rest.